and uh, we will go straight into the story of my life, which is not actually the story of my life. It's actually I've included this so that we know that where we started from. Uh, after ten years of looking after jukeboxes and fruit machines and pin tables, I decided to grow up and not having many qualifications, just uh, one O level. Uh, I applied to IBM to get some practice in being interviewed. To my utter astonishment, they offered me a job. And my first job was looking after this machine that you see here, I hope, uh, which is full of valves. You may remember valves, they're made of glass, they run hot. And uh, mostly my job was to look after the refrigerator that kept the rest of the machine cool. I had three of those i very quickly um actually uh moved on to um now i'm moving on to uh, the card punch card world which was really what what made ibm famous originally punch cards many of you will remember um this is a punch card tabulator it reads cards pretty quickly and prints out the results after a calculation. It is programmable, and this is the program. As it happened, uh, I got pretty good at programming, and although it may look like a maze of wires to you, uh, I very quickly found my way around them and got very good. Um, I'm going to fast forward a few years. Um, I ended up uh, for a few years in East Africa, looking after the IBM's machines in Ethiopia, the Sudan, and eventually Uganda. When I returned, I left IBM's data processing division and I joined their office products division. Office products was called the toy shop. It was electric typewriters and uh, recorders and clocks and all sorts of stuff but they had ambitions uh, to be electronic and they had invented something called word processing and I, my job was to go around as the word processing expert uh, the technical man and explain it all to people who had computers very strangely there was a lot of resistance to word processing. In fact, I do recall being told by one uh, very high up in British gas that I was living in cloud cuckoo land if I thought anybody would ever type words into a computer. I hope he's eating his words. Um, being the techie, of course, uh, we were very keen to get these machines to start talking to each other. At that time, I was the office products division um, for uh, uh, the EARN um, network, which was an internal network used for academics, the European Academic Research Network, which included Janet, the joint academic network, and many others in the USA, and also by that time in Russia, and spreading fast around the world. It was entirely academic. but we announced the toy shop our own very own computer um data processing division of course were pretty sniffy largely because the ibm personal computer was an ascii machine that's the american standard code for information interchange seven bits and IBM ran on 8 bits, the EBCDIC code, the extended binary coded decimal interchange code. So uh, it was nothing to do with them. IBM could, the, the toy shop could play around with these. What happened, however, very quickly, was that people started to buy them in huge numbers, particularly the corporate world. We had announced all of the specifications along with the plans and everything with the personal computer. You didn't need a license. You could clone it if you liked. Uh, that was entirely different from the way 
the data processing division generally work. And they were continued to be pretty sniffy, but they very soon stopped being sniffy about the toy shop when we started to get powerful. My job then, having made the announcement, was or helped with making the announcement, was to find a way to connect the toys, the IBM PC, to the research networks that we uh, that data processing ran. So a team of four of us got together and we started work. We had um, fortunately included in the IBM PC the software for running this obsolete card machine, punch card, printer, typewriter, uh, whatever you like. A, a general purpose punch card for attaching to mainframes, the data processing division. So I wrote a sexy front end. It was the only program I ever wrote uh, using Microsoft Basic, which made it look rather smart on our IBM PC. And we started to use the uh, data processing networks of the world to communicate with each other. And that was basically the system was to get a, a, a multi-plan spreadsheet or a, a display write word uh, document, turn it into a, a deck of punched cards and send it through the network where it was translated back into multi-plan display write, Lotus one, two, three, and all of those. Data processing were not amused. And in fact, the bombshell arrived pretty quickly. Uh, the data processing division issued a letter of non-compliance. Now that doesn't sound very serious, but it was very serious indeed. A letter of non-compliance means you will stop what you are doing immediately and you have 30 days in which to appeal. Well, of course, that was way above my uh, management uh, uh, level. So I passed it up through the echelons. It went to uh, World Trade Corporation in Paris and from there immediately to New York, where the decision was made quite quickly. Uh, within a couple of weeks, the message came back, uh, let a thousand flat flowers bloom and so we were allowed to continue as an experiment to to turn our uh, personal computer programs into punch cards or notionally punch cards and send them through the world's data processing networks. VP was never very really, uh, clear about all this. It wasn't something that they particularly wanted. Uh, in 2004, they got there what they really wanted, which was to get rid of the IBM personal computer altogether. They sold it lock, stock and barrel to China. Um, Lenovo being the name of the company, it uh, did already have some a good relationship with uh, America and had offices set up in America. So it was a, a, an obvious thing to do because data processing division were largely concerned with the amassing of networks and networks of networks in order to achieve what they were basically looking for, which was a mass of data. The answer eventually was the cloud. And the cloud sounds very innocent. As I say here, the perfect metaphor for something relatively harmless. In actual fact, what the cloud does is to collect all the information it can and concentrate it in one or two or maybe 10 places. What the cloud actually is, is um, a vast set of server farms which harvest the data and they harvest it for commercial purposes. As you will see here, uh, Google has 12 server farms just for Google alone. Now, this is probably old information. They probably got 
four times, ten times that number by now. And they're clever enough to build them on the Arctic Circle to reduce cooling costs. The server farms themselves are huge. They're vast. Uh, they are sealed and they are sealed with an atmosphere of inert gas, usually argon, to reduce the risk of fire. Um, and you can't get in. They consume vast amounts of energy. Um, and generally speaking, you can be sure that they cost an awful lot of money. Uh, and the reason is that they are going to make an awful lot of money. Uh, 